Sir, I came here to get scared, not have an existential crisis, okay? Hi everyone, my name is Julia. Thank you so much for clicking on this video. I'm so glad you're here. I am back at it again with another recommendations video for you guys. But this time, I'm going to be sharing with you guys some books that I feel are underrated and deserve more hype. But before I dive into the books, I just want to give a quick disclaimer. Honestly, I think I'm probably the most basic girl you're ever going to meet. I love pop culture. I love things mainstream. If there's something trendy, I'm gonna consume it. Like, that's who I am as a person. And I honestly have, like, no shame um, about being basic. Um, I love it. I am a proud basic girl. So it's honestly pretty surprising that I have, like, a selection of books that, you know, aren't like other books. Um, they are pretty... Well, not really unknown, but I feel like they need to be talked about more. If you're on the lookout for some, you know, indie content, this is actually not indie content. Um, you've probably heard of these books once or twice in the past, but these are some things that I have a feeling my friends, like the people that watch this video, have yet to read, and I would love to recommend these books to you guys too. So yeah, um, before anything, I think that's it. That's a pretty substantial intro. Let's get on with the books. <laughs> so to kick things off, I want to start with a little something different, which is actually the title of the first book. So the first book that I'm recommending is A Little Something Different by Sandy Hall. I actually picked this up in high school. This was recommended to me by one of my classmates at the time. And I really like this book. It is very different, as the title suggests, in the sense that it is a love story between two people, shocker. But the unique take on this love story is that we get the perspective of everyone but the main couple. So this love story is told through the eyes of the people surrounding the main couple. So we get the point of view of the barista in the coffee shop that they frequent. We also get the point of view of the teacher in the class that they're taking together. Um, we even get the point of view of the bench that they sit on and the squirrel in the park that they frequent. So it's a really interesting take on a love story. It's not your typical love story and I really enjoyed it. I know a couple of people that have read this in the past and they also enjoyed it. So if you're looking for a little something different, then definitely pick up this book. I'm not really sure if this is still being sold in bookstores. Um, you might find it in other um, selling websites, but yeah. A little something different by Sandy Hall. So for my next book recommendation, I actually mentioned this in my 2020 Best Reads video. And this book genuinely surprised me when I read it because of how much wisdom it contained. Um, I believe this book is less than 200 pages, but it was chock full of wisdom. And the fact that it's a middle grade book makes it even better. This book is called Train I Ride by Paul Mousier. I picked this up in the Big Bad Wolf sale back in February 2020. And I actually checked the online version of the Big Bad Wolf sale and it's available there. So I don't know by the time that this video is up, I'm not sure if the Big Bad Wolf sale is still ongoing, but if you can, get your hands on this book. Obviously, this is not sponsored. I wish it was, but I cannot recommend this book enough. So this book talks about this 13-year-old girl, if I'm not mistaken. Her name is Ryder, and she needs to travel from California all the way to Chicago. So she used to live with her grandmother, but her grandmother can no longer take her in, nor can she take care of her. So she needs to travel across the country to Chicago to live with some relatives. She is not happy with the move at all. But in this train ride, she meets various characters and different types of people. And in the process, she learns more about herself and she comes to embrace her individuality. And it's such a great journey. Um, I read this around my 23rd birthday and it was a very meaningful read. And it just goes to show how your mere presence is more than enough to make an impact on the people you meet and how you can even find yourself in the various people that you meet along the way. I highly recommend Train I Ride. It's a book that I don't really hear much about but I feel like it definitely deserves more hype. So if you can get your hands on a copy of A Train I Ride by Paul Mosier, go ahead and do so. Speaking of trains, my next recommendation also involves a train. Unfortunately, I don't have my copy with me, but this book is being turned into a movie starring Jordan Fisher and Dove Cameron. And I'm so excited. I read this book back in 2019 and I immensely enjoyed it. That book is called Field Notes on Love by Jennifer E. Smith. And if you guys 
like Before Sunrise, um, that movie with Julie Dubley and Ethan Hawke. I highly recommend that you pick this up. Obviously, it's not exactly the same. The themes in Before Sunrise are obviously for a more mature audience compared to Field Notes on Love, but it involves two strangers meeting on a train and developing feelings. And Before Sunrise is one of my favorite movies of all time. If you are like me, and you crave escapism, um, Field Notes on Love is definitely a book that you should check out. So what is it about? Um, from what I can remember, it follows Hugo and Margaret Campbell. So Hugo initially booked tickets, train tickets, for him and his girlfriend to go on an adventure. But unfortunately, they break up. And the tickets that he bought um, are non-transferable and non-refundable. So he has to find a person with the exact name as his girlfriend, which is Margaret Campbell. So he posts an ad and Margaret Campbell, our main girl, stumbles upon that ad and she takes it and they go on this trip together. So it's kind of like, you know, strangers to lovers, all that good stuff. And in that train ride, of course, they discover more about each other and they kind of have that will they, won't they energy they're obviously attracted to one another. Um, is it insta-love? If I'm not mistaken, I think so, but it was executed really well. And it's a young adult romance, you know, you gotta live a little. And the fact that it's being turned into a movie is a good sign in itself. Like I said, it reminded me a lot of Before Sunrise, so I think it'll make it into a great movie and I cannot wait because I love Jordan Fisher and Dove Cameron. So if you guys are looking for great escapism content, definitely check out Feel Notes on Love by Jennifer E. Smith and take my word for it. I remember having such a great time reading it. I sped through it and yeah, if you're looking for a cute YA romance that isn't really being talked about that much, definitely go ahead and pick up Feel Notes on Love by Jennifer E. Smith. So for my next book recommendation, I actually have Goodreads to thank for this, the Goodreads algorithm. I was just going through Goodreads as I usually do, it's part of my daily routine, and I stumbled upon this book. It was recommended to me, I don't remember why, like why it popped up in my algorithm, but I was so intrigued by the book cover. Unfortunately, the cover of my copy isn't the cover that I was intrigued by, so I'm gonna Put the cover here. Isn't it beautiful? Honestly, I love the whole like vintage um, retro library book. I think it's so awesome. So the blurb actually marketed the book as a book to read if you love the 80s. And I love the 80s. I love 80s references. I love 80s movies. Um, I love shows that are inspired by the 80s and i believe if i'm not mistaken it said it was perfect for lovers of stranger things and stand by me which i love so i was immediately drawn to the whole premise so the saturday night ghost club follows jake a young boy and it's set in the 1980s and every summer jake spends his time with his uncle calvin who is an eccentric man who deals with occult artifacts and one summer he befriends two new kids in town their siblings and jake together with the kids plus uncle calvin form this group called the Saturday Night Ghost Club, where in every weekend, they go out and they search for ghosts. And um, initially, prior to reading this book, I thought it was a horror book, or at least um, a creepy book. And at first, I kind of got those vibes, but then it hit me midway that this book was sad. <laughs> Honestly, I felt like I was scammed, but in the best way possible, because this book, Sorry, I haven't shown it. It's this one. Um, the Saturday Night Ghost Club by Craig Davidson. Actually, fun fact. Sorry, tangent. But um, Craig Davidson is actually, I think it's this guy's real name. He has um, another pen name called Nick Cutter. And Nick Cutter specializes in um, like hardcore horror books. Um, but Craig Davidson specializes in books that make people cry. I'm just kidding. Craig Davidson is um, the same as Nick Cutter. So I just wanted to throw that out there. I did not expect to be hit in the feels. I did not expect to have an existential crisis. This book is honestly one of the most meaningful books that I've ever read. I read this back in 2020 and um, it's a very short read. Like it's thin. It's a thin book but um, it packs a punch. It's that kind of book that um, resonates and really stays with you until the very end. I um, mean I remember there's this one passage. I'm gonna look for it and I'm gonna read it. 
um, that really hit me in the feels. I was not expecting it at all. Before long, your fears become adult ones. Crushing debts and responsibilities, sick parents and sick kids, and the possibility of dying unremembered or unloved. Fears of not being the person you were so certain you grew up to be. Sir, I came here to get scared, not have an existential crisis, okay? I was like taken aback. I was like, whoa, that's rude, but also very true. Um, this book actually tackles a lot of important themes such as grief, adulthood, coming of age, family, individuality, and coming into your own. And I think it's a very important story. An unexpected story for sure, um, underrated most definitely. But I honestly think it deserves more hype because it's the kind of story that creeps up on you. If you love coming of age stories, if you love the 80s, um, if you love you know, those kinds of vibes, then this is definitely a book that you should check out. Funnily enough, I included this in my horror spooky book readathon back in October. Like I hosted one just by myself and this was I believe the first book that I read in my readathon and I was pleasantly surprised but also caught off guard because this was definitely not in any way a horror book um, but yeah I think that you should definitely check this out if you're looking for a book that'll make you think about your life and how you want to live it moving forward okay so we're down to our last book this one was also mentioned in my 2020 best reads video and honestly I am NOT gonna stop pushing this book into the arms of every single person that I know. I will be the one to hype this book to you, my friend, if you're looking for a great enemies to lovers trope book. I think you can guess what this book is if you know me very well. This is one of my favorite enemies to lovers books of all time and it is Today, Tonight, Tomorrow by Rachel Lynn Solomon. Again, this is... This is a classic in my eyes now. Um, if anyone will ask me what's a good enemies to lovers book this one i'm gonna be mentioning this one together with the hating game today tonight tomorrow is about academic rivals rowan and neil and it is set in seattle and on the last day of their senior year of high school their class goes on a scavenger hunt around the city and Rowan and Neil have always tried to better the other and this is their final chance. They go on this scavenger hunt then they realize that they need to eliminate every single person in the competition before they can, you know, fight each other to the death. So they decide to team up in order to eliminate everyone else and then when it's just the two of them, that's when they'll, you know, have their showdown. But of course, as the day progresses um, and as they accomplish the different tasks together, they find more about each other. And you know, I'm just gonna let you fill in the blanks yourselves. I love this book so much. It is such a great execution of the enemies to lovers trope, specifically the academic rivals to lovers trope, which is a trope that I have a very soft spot for. Rowan and Neil are such charming characters. They have such great personalities and they're also very relatable. Unfortunately, this book isn't being talked about enough. Um, I see it around Bookstagram, or I think it's because I follow the author. But on YouTube, if you search this book, it doesn't really come up. Or at least there aren't any videos surrounding this book. So let me be one of the people to add to the videos about this book. But yes, I highly recommend that you get Today, Tonight, Tomorrow. I read this book like twice. I read it ebook format and then I read it or I listened to it via audiobook and I had to get my hands on a physical copy. Um, I actually plan on rereading it this year. I love books that involve cities. Like if you've read um, Dash and Lily's book of theirs, it centers around around New York City. I think it's so cool. And yeah, that's it for my recommendations. But before I end this video, I just wanted to say that there's absolutely nothing wrong with reading popular books. Um, as you guys know, I am a regular consumer of popular media. I love mainstream media. I love popular books. Um, and there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. There's a reason why these books are getting the hype that they get. There's also a reason why people love these books and they love talking about them. And there is no shame in being basic, but there's also no shame in being um, the type of person that doesn't like reading popular media. Read what you want to read. If it's something that tickles your pickle, go ahead and read it. Like, don't let anyone dictate um, 
what you read. I think that reading is an experience that is very subjective and if you love popular books, by all means read it. If you like indie books, go read them as well, you know, like just just enjoy reading <laughs> is all I want to say. But I do believe that there are unsung heroes out there, book-wise and author-wise, that I feel need to be brought to light. Um, hence this video. But yeah, read what you want to read. Like I said, if it tickles your pickle, then who am I to stop you? Who am I to dictate to you? But yes, thank you guys so much for watching this video and for being very patient with me and my uploading schedule. I hope that you guys like this video. If you have your own underrated books that you feel deserve more hype, feel free to leave them in the comments down below. I hope that you guys could like and subscribe if you haven't already and you can hit that notification bell button down below to get notified whenever I post a new video. Thank you guys so much for all your support. Take care, stay safe, and I'll see you in my next video. Bye!